Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing the RDNA 2 refresh, as there are some fresh details here, including the release window of these upcoming cards, which I'm sure will raise an eyebrow or two. Now, NVIDIA have already released a refresh of sorts for its RTX 30 series. For example, the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, which is pretty much identical to its predecessor, other than small increases in specification, not least of which, of course, the amount of V. RAM, but it's still produced on the same process and so on, so it's not like it was a massive increase in performance, and that's putting it mildly, but now AMD are getting in on the act. So we will be seeing products like the 6850XT debut between June or July, and this is according to Grayman. But perhaps the most interesting thing out of all of this is it's still going to be produced on the same 7NM process as what we have currently. Now, I personally had heard, and there were other rumors as well, that AMD were instead going to be utilizing the 6NM process, which would make a lot of sense, as you could see, well, okay, that's going to increase the clock frequency, maybe reduce power, whatever way they wanted to go, but allegedly, this is not the case. Now, it's possible that they will still increase the clock frequency, just from other optimization, and it's surefire that we'll see an increase in the specification of the memory configuration, basically just using faster memory chips. But if this is true, and Grayman does have typically really good information, it is a little disappointing to say the least. Also, I can't help but wonder why these GPUs are releasing so late, quote unquote, because it's not going to be that much later on, like a quarter, maybe a little more, that we're going to start to see RDNA 3 launch. Now, a possibility is that we'll see Narve 31 and 32 launch first, and then 33 launch later on, and so they want 21 and 22, which are the only products which are going to be receiving a refresh, but honestly, that's not what I heard. I heard that 33 is also going to be releasing this year, so again, it's not like it's going to be that much later. Another possibility, and obviously I'm spitballing here, but another possibility, um, and one of my sources told me this, but honestly, I don't know how much faith or stock I put in this, is that um, basically, the RX 6000 series cards are going to act as like the cheaper quote unquote option, and even Narve 33 onwards is going to be pretty expensive. Again, I don't know about that, but it is possible, I suppose. I'm pretty damn certain that Narve 31 is going to be really expensive, particularly the flagship SKUs. Like, ugh. I, I think that they're going to be actually really kind of tight in class or even above that in terms of price. Although you have to remember that those GPUs are absolutely ridiculous. And unless you're really trying to push like ultra high frame rates at 4K, most people are probably not going to even need that level of performance anyway. Furthermore, for a product that I'm sure is going to excite many of you, I'm going to quickly mention this anyway, the RX 6500. Now, obviously... <laughs> AMD's more recent GPU hasn't exactly been the most exciting, and I suspect that this is going to be even less interesting for many of you because it's basically going to be similar in specification to the RX 6400, which was an OEM product. As an aside, I don't believe though that RDNA 3's mobile GPUs will launch at the same time as desktop. I've heard that instead that's going to be more like Q1 next year. So basically we're going to see the desktop parts launch first, and then a a little bit later on, we're going to be seeing the uh, mobile variant. So it's going to be very interesting to see how marketing around all of that actually ends up because, yeah, I mean, AMD's desktop products, I think, are probably going to do really well this time. I suspect in terms of raster performance, they're probably going to be faster than NVIDIA offerings, but I am hearing some really interesting things. I'm trying to verify before I say more on this, but I'm hearing some very interesting things regarding RTX 40, aka Lovelace, in terms of not only its ray tracing performance, but also things concerning upsampling and some other bits as well. So I think that AMD's marketing will look very different from NVIDIA's. I suspect both will want to craft rather different narratives, um, and it's not a like-for-like -like comparison, it's actually quite different, but 
you can kind of think of this in marketing terms remember when amd were pushing for when zen came out like the original zen uh, architecture for example how amd were making it all about multi-thread and intel were pushing like single thread performance up the wazoo with car, uh, cpus like the uh, I'm about to say 6700 it would have been the 7700k and it's not that necessarily one was wrong and one was right it I mean you can make an argument that AM4 was definitely more future proof but they were both kind of coming at it from different perspectives I'm hearing it's going to be very similar for Intel uh, sorry for uh, Nvidia and uh, AMD going forward speaking of Nvidia there is of course, something we have to address concerning NVIDIA, and that is the RTX 3090 Ti. So, where is it? <laughs> it's a question, and I've decided to do a bit of investigation on my own. I've reached out to several sources, including AIBs, and I'm like, my, pretty much my question to most of them is, dude or dudette, where is it? Like, seriously. And obviously, I'm not going to say which companies have told me what, but all I can say is that no one knows. Um, and this is kind of a weird situation. So, uh, pretty much what the last thing I'd heard was that the 3090 um, Ti, Ti, whatever you want to call it, had some production issues now i don't know whether this stuff is true because the thing of that is like what was the production issue was it that there was a part that wasn't uh ready on time was there like issues with the shipment of memories that had been received was it an actual uh, problem with the die itself was it the cooler wasn't good enough was it the vrm solution you know just saying that the production issue it doesn't really help and also it's possible that just with the way things are right now that could have also caused the problem but to my knowledge um, and again i've spoken to several let's say companies and i again i can't say who for obvious reasons but they've told me that uh, basically the original release date pretty much was the same time as the 3050 which of course i actually recently reviewed and then after that you know, we were supposed to see the 3090 Ti and pretty much, you know, the the press were supposed to got in the GPU. I can't remember if it's five or seven days ago that one person told me, but let's say a week before the release date, but nothing materialized. And they are still asking, you know, the, you know, NVIDIA and NVIDIA are basically keeping Sturm and just saying that we'll let you know. So I honestly have absolutely no idea what the hell is going on with the RTX 3090 Ti. It's it's definitely a bit of a mystery. It's possible that the GPU will not launch. Now, I'm not saying my sources are telling me that. I'm just saying it's possible because it's been super mystery. It's, been a, it's, just, it's just a mystery. I, I imagine NVIDIA probably will launch it, but again, I don't know. Um, the thing is, if it if it's much longer, I don't know if it's worth it, simply because obviously the RTX 40 series will be released. And I'm hearing that that's not going to be too late. I'm, I'm hearing Lovelace it could even be as early as Q3. And given the fact that it's already February, which is kind of scary, I don't know how the hell it, uh, January just disappeared like that, but whatever. Yeah, uh, you can get where I'm going with this. I honestly don't know. And this brings me to the last story for today. And it concerns the PCIe Gen 5 power connector. So there were a lot of discussions made when NVIDIA shown off their newfangled connector, which of course was for the RTX 30 series. And many thought it was proprietary, but this has actually not been the case. So um, uh, Hardware's Lux has actually done a pretty good write-up on this, or more specifically, Andreas from Hardware Lux. I'll leave a link to his tweet. And by the way, there's also uh, links to Grayman's tweet in the description as well. But basically, Andreas is stating that the new connector for the new standard for PCIe Gen 5 is also compatible with NVIDIA's GPU. So basically, this means that NVIDIA essentially took the standard and then implemented it first. The name of the connector is actually Molex Microfit 3.0 Dual Row 12 Circuits. 
it just rolls off the tongue. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, I kind of find this amusing, honestly, in some respects, because NVIDIA pretty much did the same thing with RTX as, like, the pioneer for DirectX 12 Ultimate, if you remember, with features like mesh shaders, variable rate shading, hardware-based ray tracing. They basically pushed it first, and then later on it was part of the specification. So it's almost like NVIDIA were like the... I don't want to say test dummies, but I suppose in some ways they were. It's pretty cool, though. Furthermore, um, Igor's lab, and I'd like to give cur courtesy credit to videocards.com, which is where I first noticed this, uh, Igor's lab actually has a pin out for the uh, GPUs, and it's quite an interesting, it's quite interesting, to be honest, that we're moving on to this, because the power delivery of this is kind of bonkers. Uh, basically, it's recommended that you hit around 600 watts, but theoretically you could go up to about 648. That's the maximum. Um, so, yeah, I mean, essentially just a single one of these pins, or sorry, one of, a single one of these plugs, connectors, whatever you want to call it, could deliver a crap ton of juice. And you could have two, and it's almost like 1300 watts, which is absolutely just crazy when you think about it. Um... Then again, the next generation cards like the RTX 40 and even RDNA 3 are going to be really power hungry. My prediction is that by the time we get to like RDNA 4 and, you know, RTX 50, what's going to basically happen is you're just going to plug your, you know, you're just going to plug the kettle lead into the, into the graphics card and rather than having a power supply, the, the GPU is just going to handle the power delivery to your motherboard. It's going to be the reverse. It's going to be great. And yes, I am being a bit sarcastic, but seriously, these new cards are just, they're just so damn power hungry. It's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. It's really cute to look back at the old, you know, like, what was it? The uh, ATI 9700, I think was the first card. I think it's one of the first. It might have been it might have been the 5000 series from from NVIDIA, I can't remember. But one of those two cards was the first one that I had that required an external power connector. I think, oh, it's the 9800 for me, 9800 Pro. And I remember being so weirded out that I had to connect it to this, you know, to my power supply. Like, this feels wrong. Why am I directly hooking up the power? And now it's like, oh, okay. That was pretty normal uh, back when I had, like, Voodoo two and three obviously it was all powered directly from the pci slot not pcie either anyway um i think that's just about it for this video apologies for no camera but uh it's been one of those days where i've been doing a lot of admin work photography and some other bits and pieces so it's just kind of a crazy day but normal well okay i was gonna say normal service but it's me so as normal as i can be will re return shortly with that said thanks very much for watching take care of yourselves bye for now